the research of the in his research presentation at the Continental Conference for Accountants, Kayongo shared research information indicating Uganda as one of the most entrepreneurial countries globally. For the research of this paper, which was carried out, Uganda is one of the most entrepreneurial countries globally and uh, was the most entrepreneurial country in 2014. Unfortunately, Uganda's high and rising entrepreneurial activity does not translate into the desired entrepreneurial success. He, however, highlighted that Uganda's high entrepreneurial activity does not translate into the desired entrepreneurial success in that most of the SMEs close prematurely before celebrating their first birthday because of numerous reasons, including lack of professional accountants coaching. He therefore laid out the benefits of professional accountants coaching. Operators in Uganda fail in business because they lack the knowledge and skills needed to optimize the value of their business enterprises. And based on, on these findings, uh, professional accountants should coach entrepreneurs to transform their SMEs from informality to formality, but also to sustainable business practices. Among these practices include accessibility to the various uh, capital options. Are these novices going to deploy debt to complement equity? But debt is risky in nature, yet equity is available in abundance. Are they uh, going to translate value using the available assets that they have acquired, like, like, like land or infrastructure? Are they going to consider renewable energy or non-renewable energy? These are, these are the questions. The other area is the formal registration. And when businesses, because when businesses register formally, they get lots of benefits, including negotiation for taxes and also qualifying to do business with government and international uh, organizations. The other area is the area of risk management practice. And the risk here, you can categorize risk in the form of uh, systematic and unsystematic. Systematic risk, the novices would do less because it is externally controlled. But any systematic is internal risk. They can do a lot to mitigate this risk. It is either poor, poor exposure to business management, it is in the fraud, it is in all these losses which uh, encompass our businesses, business, our, our running of businesses day to day. The other area is adequate financial reporting. If the novices can translate from this informality by adopting the acceptable reporting standards, for example, the statement of, of comprehensive income, the, 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 the balance sheet, so that they are able to assess, at the end of the, the business season, they are able to assess how much income they have made, how much expenses they have incurred, how much profit or loss, and also to register formally their assets. The other area is the effective cost control. And here, the most important, the planning aspect and also budgeting. Because when they budget, they are able to forecast their income and expenses. And then at the end of the season, they can, they can measure the performance. Another area is the adoption of appropriate technology. Can they automate some of the routine business practices? To boost efficiency. He concluded by giving an example of Undeja University that started as a small institute but has now stood the test of time for over 30 years and grown into the most prestigious private university in Uganda. Where I work, Undeja University is now 30 years. When it started, it was a small university, unknown, and it was the first private university started in Uganda. Not formally registered, but through the process when it got registered with the official organ in the country, the National Council for Higher Education, it was able to regain recognition. It was able to attract a number of students locally, regional, and internationally. It has got, ac it, 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 it got access to international funding through the grants and the research. It has been able to acquire bank loans to complement the volatile student tuition. And each and every infrastructure on campus is aligned to a specific batch of loan. It has developed 
the ICT capacity so that the delivery of lectures now is a hybrid. And that's why we've been able to survive the post-COVID-19 uh, COVID challenges through this uh, online teaching, complementing the conventional teaching. Over 2,000 delegates and speakers from more than 56 English, French and Portuguese-speaking countries attended the Congress. Jacqueline Namuli, live at 8.